we all will be live in one minute so i would request all of you to please switch on your cameras and keep yourself mute i am still waiting for praveen do he's just joining snigda so the post that you shared on your linkedin uh the logos that you used are the ones uh, that you put up before we got it corrected just just a second i'll just get it corrected thanks Thanks, Shobhika. So, Mr. Abhi, live. Okay, so we are live now. Our advisor, Mr. N. K. Pajin, uh, might also be joining. So, if you see a request from him, yes, of course, I have added. So, Shobhika, now we are live, and I'm going to start. We are live on Facebook now. So, so my name is Nidha Varma, and I'm from India Vision Foundation. I head the communications at India Vision Foundation, and today we are commemorating the Menstrual Hygiene Day. And uh, for the same, we have hosted a panel discussion. which is going to talk about the relevance of menstrual hygiene in the light of covid-19 and how we are seeing these days how people are struggling in the marginalized and vulnerable communities we are going to highlight the challenges and also it's an attempt to give some action oriented points that would be helping these communities here we have a very good and a very rich diverse panel with us today which i'm going to introduce briefly as we go ahead uh, first of all i would like to welcome all of you to uh, this panel discussion and thank you for joining us today so uh, to set the tone of the program i would like to invite mr praveen kam from uh, sparkminda uh, who is also our collaborator and uh, who has also partnered with us for a project inside the prisons which is known as project shakti so welcome uh, praveen and over to you now thank you very much snigda um very very important subject on which we are talking today and um, we all know that uh, access to menstrual hygiene management is uh, just not a need but um, this should be a sustainable practice and uh, we do understand that uh, this is a subject of human rights the sustainable development goals of united nation also looks at uh, the importance of uh, menstrual hygiene management and uh, its accessibility majorly in uh, the vulnerable groups of uh, uh, not only india but various parts of the world so particularly if in context of uh, india if we look at we have a lot of uh, facts uh, which we also learned by working uh, on this uh, uh, important subject menstrual hygiene management i represent an organization called sparkminda uh, uh, i i take care of the foundation for the group and uh, uh, in our foundation there are various uh, uh, csr programs uh, based on skilling um, education environment resource protection uh, persons with disabilities and women empowerment and we understand that menstrual hygiene management is one of the major subjects to be dealt well uh, we have worked in a couple of states in india and with that uh, we uh, have some of the learnings which i like to share to set the tone before we uh, start with the panel discussion so even if we are in 21st century but uh, um, we know uh, we have some of the facts that we collected from the rural parts of uh, tamil nadu and uttar pradesh that uh, women yet think that uh, uh, the menstrual cycle is something wrong with them and with their body so that's something to be Uh, taken a note of and it looks alarming if it's if you know the world when it's progressing that the, there are a set of women who do not understand what is the importance of it and then like they get into uh, the unhealthy practice which leads them ultimately to various kinds of issues 
So uh, there are various vulnerable groups with whom we have identified such kind of uh, practices and the impact of it is uh, not only biological, but the psychological impact also. There are social impact also. We, we have some of the statistics that says uh, uh, the accessibility to sanitary napkin and uh, other menstrual hygiene uh, practices to the women. If you look at the data, it says that the only 35% of the women in India is having its accessibility. Um, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the girls who are going to school, the time that they reach to their age of puberty, uh, 25 million girls, uh, you know, every year they drop out from the school. So just think about the impact of this overall, you know, uh, issue and how holistically this is impacting various uh, facets. You know, that's that's how I told that it's not only biological but psychological. It's social. It's educational. Uh, you know, overall uh, impact is there. Half the adolescent girls uh, who in India they are not uh, uh, completely uh, properly aware about the menstrual hygiene practices. So um, see the the. Uh, the narrative is known to us that this is that various vulnerable groups, various set of women in parts of the country, and uh, considering the importance of it, uh, uh, the government has also initiated various programs. If we look at the, some of the recent programs, the the, the free day pad, pad scheme of uh, um, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare that that has benefited a lot of women. Uh, the Sabla uh, program, which was introduced in 2011 by Ministry of uh, Women and Child, uh, that has also impacted and benefited a lot of women with this. So there are many other Rashtriya Kishori uh, Swastha Yojana is there, Ujjala Sanitary Napkin Yojana, which was started by this uh, IOCL, BPCL, BPCL, and one more like, uh, uh, you know, oil making company. So there's a lot of, lot of um, uh, corporates, a lot of NGOs who are working on this very subject and trying to supplement to the cause of the government. We all understand the importance of it and how how critical is this subject to be taken up to the rural parts of the country. We, we started a program uh, 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 for, for menstrual hygiene management in the year 2015 by signing a um, commitment to United Nation, uh, which was a commitment under every woman, every child. My, my friends from Pathfinder is here and we, we did this program together and we had a commitment to reach to 3,000 women to make them aware about these practices and we did it and we completed it in the year 2019. We worked in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and also uh, in the last couple of years we worked in Haryana. So we have uh, plenty of learnings from it. Uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of uh, statistics which are uh, alarming and um, uh, the problem statement is well known. So this is where I'll stop and I think I've set the tone for the panel discussion and uh, like I would now request Renuji to take it ahead with an experts today. I think we have an esteemed panel and uh, uh, this, this panel will, uh, will, will talk about all such inaccessibility issues uh, and the solution with this uh, narrative that uh, we have started today's discussion. So thank you very much for having me, Snita, and over to you. Thank you. It's always a delight to hear uh, when Mr. Praveen is talking and uh, it's always very, very insightful whenever we hear him because he's got such diverse experience about menstrual hygiene and uh, whatever uh, Praveen had mentioned, I think it is the right way. I think we are going ahead with our uh, discussion today. And as Praveen introduced that, uh, Ms. Renu Nag will, taking, uh, will be taking ahead the program right now. But before uh, ma'am takes over, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, swiftly introduce our panels for uh, our panelists for uh, today. And I would request Sumit to please uh, put up the presentation for our panelist introduction. So I'll quickly uh, introduce our panelist and then over to you, Renu ma'am. So we have with us Ms. Shobhika Ghai, who is the Assistant Manager, CSR Sparkmanda Foundation. So Shobhika has a master's degree in social work and uh, specializes in women-centered uh, practices. And uh, she has always been very passionate about driving social change through empowerment and upskilling. And prior to joining Sparkmanda, she had worked extensively with communities on issues of gender, health, capacity building. 
and at Sparkminda Foundation, she monitors and manages the day-to-day -day functions of the projects and spearheaded women health uh, programs. And uh, today, uh, Shobika is going to talk about uh, how the CSR initiatives by various foundations help uh, in menstrual hygiene, uh, to promote the menstrual hygiene. And she's going to specifically talk about how uh, their project, the Project Shakti, has helped in correctional institutes in collaboration with India Vision Foundation. Over to you, uh, Shobika. Thank you, Sumit. Uh, thank you, Snigdha. Thank you for the introduction. And our project, it's also your project. It's India Vision Pathfinder and Sparkminder Foundation's project. So because today's panel discussion focused on women in vulnerable and uh, marginalized sections of society, we thought that uh, talking about our prison project would be a good opportunity and uh, the kind of access uh, that we have or uh, people uh, have in normal circumstances might uh, be different for people even from good, well-educated backgrounds when they are inside the prison. So I'll quickly share my screen. I've prepared a short presentation that I wanted to share with everybody and talk about the program a little. I hope my uh, screen is visible. Yes, Shobika. Uh, we can see you, but not your screen yet. Just a second, just a second. Yeah, right. now we can, now we can. So. Shakti Strengthening Menstrual Hygiene in Prisons of India was, we started thinking about the project somewhere in 2020 and it took us a good six, seven months to chalk out the project and how we would want to uh, take it up. Uh, India Vision Foundation has been our partner since the beginning, has been uh, the partner responsible for brainstorming and planning of the project. Uh, officially, we launched the project after months of deliberation on 8th of March, 2021, initially as a pilot in four prisons of Haryana, uh, Jajar, Rotak, Faridabad, and Karnal. Uh, Shakti aims at strengthening the menstrual hygiene management in prisons of India. It is a result of like-minded organizations like India Vision Foundation, uh, Pathfinder, and Sparkminda coming together with the uh, full support of prison administration uh, to bring equity to access the sanitation. And um, uh, we, uh, women in prisons continue to be one of the most vulnerable sections of society in India where talking about menstruation, conversations around menstruation within families, within households, within workplaces are taboo. Uh, access to uh, proper hygiene and understanding of these uh, issues for people in prison settings uh, is serves as a bigger challenge. Uh, so we identified that through a study that there was limited access to sanitary napkins, inadequate disposal facilities, and lack of conversations around menstruation uh, within the prison premises as well. And that is why we uh, initiated Project Shakti. A baseline study was conducted by India Vision uh, in the prisons uh, with, uh, with 100 women. And uh, some of these found findings I'm sh sharing here, they found that the 84% 80, of the respondents were of menstruating age. 76% uh, of their 76 of them belong to low income groups, uh, while and 96% uh, came from urban settings. In terms of access to sanitary products, uh, it was found that while women do get sanitary napkins uh, from the prison authorities, uh, they are not adequate as different women have varied periods, different needs, and a set uh, uh, period, uh, a set of uh, sanitary napkin uh, cannot be uh, given to them. And uh, because of the sharing of common spaces and washrooms, uh, the disposal facilities in the prison was also a cause of concern for the inmates. Responsive, the respondents were also asked for their initial source of menstrual knowledge as to what they understand and when did they find out about what menstrual health or menstrual hygiene was or menstruation was. It was found that over 81% of the women had no knowledge of menstruation before they hit puberty and many still considered it to be a cause of God. So how did we decide to intervene in the prisons? Uh, initially, uh, in the first phase, sanitary napkin vending machines and incinerators were installed in uh, 
four prisons as part of our five year, five year. And uh, we collaborated with Pathfinder International for technical support and our MHM training module was developed specifically for prisons. Uh, and a TOT was conducted for trainers to go inside the prisons and conduct training. Our MHM tool is currently being developed under which a comic booklet has already been designed uh, to distribute amongst the inmates uh, at our intervention locations and raise awareness about MHM. Uh, because of the second wave of COVID, we had to adapt to uh, the new normal and uh, we uh, took Shakti to a digital platform and uh, conducted online. We have already conducted two sessions, one in Janjar and one in Ambala prison uh, to raise awareness. And uh, these sessions were conducted on the 24th and 27th of May. Uh, we have also developed, as I hope you can see on your screen, a comic book called Sidi Sachi Baj with the help of uh, Jatan Sansthan and a based organization. Uh, which, co which covers most menstrual hygiene management knowledge and uh, covering till menopause, talking about menopause to cover women who are not in the menstruating age uh, within the prison anymore. And uh, in our road ahead, we aim to cover uh, more prisons in the uh, year to come and maybe hopefully reach 13 more prisons in this year and take this project in the five, next four, five years, Pan India. Our project partners, is in your vision, Haryana Prisons and Pathfinder International. So that's all from me. I think I've taken enough time and I'd be happy to answer any questions at the end of the session. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shobika. And now I would like to introduce our next uh, panelist. And uh, Sumit, can we have the slide, please? So our next panelist is Mr. Nayan Chakravarti, and he's the Director, Partnerships and External Affairs, Pathfinder International. Nayan is also Advocacy Lead for Asia Region Global Affairs. His work includes leading and providing advocacy support to India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Myanmar, and Nepal. He comes with two decades of public health experience in advocacy, public research, and strategic partnership with officials from senior government and international bilateral uh, agencies. Sumit, can we have the next slide? In his previous role, he has worked with various reputed national and international organizations, including Party Action Lab, Partnership for Economic Policy, PHFI, IF, IMR, and Care India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Krizik uh, Education Credentials includes uh, Masters in Public Health from London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, University of London, postgraduate in rural management from Xavier's Institute of Social Services, undergrad in agriculture and PhD, which is ongoing from BU University Amsterdam at the Netherlands. He's also the recipient of the prestigious Welcome Trust Fellowship. We welcome you, Nayan. And today, uh, Nayan is going to talk about how uh, we can have affordable nutrition for, uh, you know, uh, during the times of pandemic for these vulnerable and marginalized communities, I would request Nayan to please introduce the topic and start his presentation, please. Thank you so much, Snigna. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay, so, and thanks to uh, India Vision Foundation for the invite and uh, Spark Minda uh, Foundation for bringing us together and making it possible. So I have uh, prepared some slides. If I just let me see if I can kind of uh, share those slides with you. We can see your screen. Okay. Let me know if you can see my slides as well. Yes, we can see your slides. Okay, so thanks once again. And uh, so I'll be very quick. And these are the things, you know, we already kind of uh, know about it. And uh, so I'll try to be very brief. Uh, so I want to kind of uh, talk about the affordable ways of meeting our nutritional needs. Uh, for menstrual hygiene and uh, COVID-19. So 
whether it is pandemic or whether it is any situation, I think few things cannot stop. And one is menstrual uh, menstruation and uh, um, a woman and getting pregnant. Um, some of the very brief background. Uh, so already Praveen has uh, talked about some of the background, but I thought that it's good to kind of uh, put a bit of background. So out of uh, 113 adolescent girls in India, 54% uh, of them are girls. Uh, those who are unaware of the menstruation before they actually start their first period and staggering 88% um, of the girls and women uh, in the country. So they actually uh, are using some form of unsafe, uh, unhygienic uh, menstrual absorbents. Um, the, mortality, the mortality rate of uh, the women in India, um, which act as uh, the, the maternal mortality rate of uh, the women in India, which is uh, primarily an indicator of how many women are dying because of pregnancy or pregnancy related reason is uh, close to 139. And uh, it's still one of the highest globally. So roughly we kind of lose one woman in India because of pregnancy or pregnancy related uh, reason every five minutes. Uh, so if you look at uh, uh, the direct reason of uh, why so many women are dying in India. So one of the key cause uh, of those deaths are postpartum hemorrhage, which is close to 26% um, of the total deaths of maternal, maternal deaths. Um, so talking a brief about uh, anemia prevalence in children uh, and adolescents. So, so if you can see the graph here, so anemia is quite widespread and this is something that we know. Almost more than half of the children are anemic half of the women, those who are pregnant or not pregnant, they are anemic. But what is interesting to note here is if you look at, so these are the graphs. So this one is of children. I hope you are able to see that. This is non-pregnant. This is the bar for the pregnant woman. And this is all women put together. And this is all men put together. So when it comes to anemia, and not a surprise, less than half of the men as compared to women, they are anemic. And out of the different reasons, you know, why uh, women are anemic, so iron deficiency stands out to be the, the key reason. Uh, close to around 66%. of uh, So this is kind of uh, uh, talking about how, uh, how this menstrual health and hygiene, how it is actually linked to the larger cause. I think Praveen has also touched upon it. Just to give one example. So I don't know if you have kind of uh, followed this uh, uh, news that uh, which came out in 2019 and uh, this came up in the Hindustan Times that close to 66% of the girls uh, from the government schools in Delhi. So they actually skip their classes during when they are menstruating, which actually means that on an average four days a month, put together 50 days in a year. So just imagine the kind of the impact it will have on their education, their learning ability and further, you know, their contribution to the labor force. And no wonder why, uh, in spite of being one of the fastest growing economy across the globe, if you look at the female labor force participation, it's one of the lowest globally. It's uh, one fourth. Um, so, and of course, with the COVID-19, I think uh, the labor force participation of female was itself very low, but COVID-19 uh, you know, uh, you know, contributed to the problem further. And if you just look at this one data, which is, um, when the lockdown was uh, uh, imposed in the country. And uh, so this is the data from that time. So during the period March to April uh, 2020, close to 26%, so one quarter of the women workforce, those who were there in the workforce, they came out of it. And as compared to that of the men, which is 13.4%. Uh, so it's again, the woman which has beard the brunt um, uh, of coming out of the labor force. At one end, the representation is low, was much lower globally. And at the other end, because of COVID-19, there has been a lot of women, those who are part of the workforce, they further came out of it. And, uh, uh, and this is also uh, you know, been kind of pointed out in uh, the NFHS 1516, that the woman faces uh, you know, the ex extraordinary kind of mobility restrictions also, and almost half of the women, they can't even go to nearby market alone. So uh, the woman's participation in the labor force, um, that's something which is very important if you also look at it from the economic perspective. And this was the study which was undertaken by the UN Global Compact Study 2020, which talks about that uh, woman participation in labor force 
if this would have been as similar to that of the men. So that can boost the, the GDP of the country by 27%. I think this is strong enough reason why it is important to talk about menstrual health and hygiene. Uh, so now coming back to, I'm trying to link it with now the, the, the nutrition and the nutrition requirement. Um, so we know that you know, all natural beings, whether it's human or anything else, you know, we have the in, you know, inbuilt ability to protect, uh, heal, and also to flourish. If the food and the resources that's available locally, if we, we, if we have right access to them. And uh, we already know that COVID-19 is not just a health issue. Uh, it's much beyond that. And it has almost, it has affected all aspects of our life, including livelihood, education, and so on. So we have this uh, dual challenge, if you see. So at one end, we need to stay healthy to, uh, and, and boost our immunity. And at the other end, uh, uh, so uh, the, the, the food or the resources that actually can keep us uh, uh, healthy and, and, and improve our immunity. So there are uh, issues around accessibility and affordability at the same time. So I think we are in that stage where we know that you know, there are a lot of resources, there are a lot of nutrition which are available locally, but the question is, are that are those resources, are those nutrition, those are affordable and accessible at the same time? Uh, although the requirements, if you see, and if you look at the, uh, look at it, uh, the different uh, food groups, and if you look at it from the immunity point of view or um, keeping us health, healthy point of view, so the two groups, which are the vitamins and the minerals, uh, that comes to uh, as one of the strongest area. And we also are aware of that, you know, the requirement of the vitamins and minerals is also age specific. So what a child of uh, six years old would need and what an adult would need is very different. But just for the sake of uh, simplifying this discussion, so we'll be focusing most on the adults as of now, uh, because we are talking about uh, Project Shakti and it all, uh, it's, it's, it talks about uh, the in-prison uh, inmates, uh, those who are in that age group. Um, so looking at it from the COVID-19, uh, the vitamins and minerals, which becomes very essential for us, and this is not a surprise, we all know iron. Why iron? Because we have seen that iron is one of the reasons why, one of the contribution why there are uh, so many women, those who are anemic, and uh, vitamin C, vitamin A, and zinc. So these are the other um, uh, uh, other minerals that will be vitamins that we'll be talking about. Uh, moving forward, uh, let us talk about vitamin A and vitamin A. We all know that it helps us in um, you know in our vision. So especially when it is dim light, but also it has uh, uh, it has other implications as well. And one of the uh, one of the area that it actually can help us to, and it provides the natural defense uh, system to our body from illness and infection. Zinc and uh, vitamin A, we can get it from different sources. I have put carrots and papaya, which are locally available and uh, uh, can be, can, can, uh, should be also affordable at the same time. Uh, zinc, so zinc, we know that, you know, it has, again, a defensive uh, uh, system in our body, which improves the immunity in our body and zinc also um, helps us to uh, for the cell division for the cell growth and also helps us to heal uh, and uh, one important aspect of zinc is uh, it's needed for the sense of smell and taste and when i say smell and taste i'm sure that many of our thoughts has taken us to the loss of smell and taste when you get covid positive so zinc is again there are different sources if you are a non-vegetarian that's the good source if you're a vegetarian so a lot of dairy products that gives, that's the natural source of uh, zinc. I'm sorry, but you have just one more minute. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'll be very precise. Vitamin C, again, there are a lot of uh, foods, citrus and all, broccoli and all. So, and drumstick, which is locally available and it has a very high nutrition value as well. Um, I just want to talk about three wonder ingredients, garlic, turmeric, and ginger, which are locally available. And all of them has very strong antioxidant properties. And these are the things which were there in our culture and we have been taking it in different forms. Garlic, the best way to take it is in raw form. When you crush it, it forms uh, 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 allicin, which is an important compound. And this is also important also to uh, keep us uh, our blood pressure and uh, diabetes under control. 
I'll stop with this uh, saying that, uh, you know, this is a saying which is a Persian one, that we are going through a very difficult phase, but we, I'm pretty sure that, you know, this, uh, this too shall pass. And uh, so I'm pretty confident about that as well. So I'll stop there, over to you. Thank you so much, Nayan. And I think this was uh, quite insightful and we got to know a lot of uh, relevant things from your uh, presentation. And uh, now I would request Sumit to uh, please uh, help me introduce the next panelist with us. So the next panelist with us is uh, Wei Young. And I was quite impressed by, you know, uh, when I read about her age and her name is Miss Anisha Bhatia. And she heads the communications at the Period Society. So Anisha is a 14 year old enigmatic crusader of all the things related to gender equality, menstrual equity and animal welfare. She heads the communications at the Period Society, an organization working with menstrual uh, equality within India, along with using her social media platform to make differences in the realm of gender equality, mental health and LGBTQ rights. Anisha marches forth with power to make a difference. Along with a passion for women empowerment, Anisha also works to make continuous differences in the lives of few stray animals. Using her words as her most valued weapon, she uses the art to bring alive conversations on gender equality, period equity, sexual violence, and much more. Having spoken as a TEDx speaker, Anisha believes that one act of rebellion uh, can start a revolution. And today, Anisha is going to talk about period party. So Anisha, over to you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I just will very quickly share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So today I'm going to be speaking about period poverty in the light of COVID-19 specifically. But before that, I would like to tell you a little bit about the organization that I am from. Um, I am from the Period Society, and we are a completely youth-led organization working towards ending the menstrual stigma in India. Um, we are under a registered charitable trust called Dr. Shanti Patel Memorial Trust, and we are a youth-driven nonprofit co combating the taboo surrounding menstrual and sexual health um, while ending period poverty with an emphasis on environmental sustainability. We have reached over 25,000 individuals to our programs and distributed thousands of period products to our chapter-wide bad distribution drives. We have over 25 chapters across India and five global chapters. We've distributed over 50,000 period products um, with the majority of them being sustainable period products. Um, so what I would like to speak about today is the most vulnerable communities during COVID-19. Um, some menstruators have been impacted immensely and comparatively more than other people. And these are the communities that I want to speak about today. Um, the communities that I will be speaking about are sex workers, the trans community, daily wage workers, and the homeless. Um, in India especially, these are some of the most impacted communities, and they have not been able to access period products easily. Um, so I would like to start by talking about sex workers. Um, it, India is home of some of the biggest red light areas across the world, including Kamatipura and Sonagachi. Um, so sex workers are unable to earn due to social distancing norms as they can't carry out their jobs and therefore they don't even earn enough to afford their next meal, to support their children's education, to support their homes. Um, and period products are not even a necessity for them. Um, they use products like sponges and rags when needed, and periods are often seen as hindrances because of the fact that they cannot earn during those times. Um, they also can't use products like pads often, and therefore using products like menstrual cups are always better ideas for them 
However, menstrual cups are also expensive products and as privileged people, we can afford them, but they cannot. Um, the trans community. The trans community has always not had an equal access to period products, but COVID-19 has impacted them immensely. Um, on, they can't afford any hormones, they can't afford period products, or even if they can, um, they can't walk into medical stores asking for period products because of the embarrassment and shame that they feel when they do walk in and bu um, buy period products. And um, the low-income communities, low-income trans communities are faced with a lot of hate and they've barely been able to get through their days. At EPS, we've been working with a couple of organizations working with trans the trans communities of Mumbai and India and trying to provide them with basic menstrual um, products. However, it is something that while we cannot empathize with completely, it is something that is a huge problem today. And it's important to consider their struggles and understand that COVID-19 has impacted them a lot. Um, daily wage workers, um, they are unable to earn during the pandemic due to lockdown and different things. While the pandemic has eased up a little bit now, while the lockdown has eased up a little bit now, it is still a struggle for them to kind of go ahead and work. They're unable to afford ration and period products are no longer a priority. And for many of them, they didn't even know what periods were to actually understand that they need to have hygienic period practices. So education is something that we severely lack. COVID-19 has brought about the fact that period poverty is a shadow pandemic, especially during um, COVID-19. What is a shadow pandemic? Um, a shadow pandemic is um, a, something that occurs with another one. It is not necessarily a health outbreak. It is not necessarily like COVID-19, but that means it doesn't have much attention and it's about an important issue in the world currently. Um, and period poverty is something that India has been facing for a very long period of time. So many, um, almost 3 million girls drop out of school after their first period every year, as per a study conducted in 2017. Um, this means because of the pandemic, more individuals have been impacted and have found themselves victims of period poverty. Post-COVID solutions, we need to have NGOs supporting menstruators who lack access and education, providing free products, subsidized products, and education. Education is very important and the correct education is very necessary. Government spending and initiatives to support education and awareness are needed too. Governments have to be able to spend enough to support these um, different people and to support menstruators across the country. But we need to start with education and comprehensive sex education curriculums in schools, including government schools, so that no menstruator drops out of school after their first period due to a lack of knowledge on what it is. That is all I have to speak about today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us via email at pediatrosociety at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anisha. I think I think this is really uh, nice, and I think this gives us a worldview about you know different uh, vulnerable and marginalized communities that we were trying to highlight. And thank you so much for joining us today. So now I would request Sumit to kindly uh, present our next panelist with us. So our next panelist with us is Dr. Ghazala Shaheen. She's the Regional Resource Coordinator for the North India region, and she's from the Pathfinder International. She's a public health professional with a medical degree, and she's been working for the health, health and rights of women and girls, especially on family planning, maternal and child health, and HIV AIDS since uh, nine, nine years now. And she's also worked extensively in the various districts of Haryana. And being a woman and mother of a girl child, she's very passionate towards women's rights to control her body. And today, uh, she's going to tell us how we all can take better care of ourselves and how these small steps uh, and how she's able to, you know, uh, 
culminate all these small small steps uh, of sensitizing uh, women and girls across the marginalized and vulnerable communities welcome uh, dr gazala uh, i would like to make a small announcement due to some technical glitch we weren't be able to uh, go live on facebook so i would request if your networks and friends can join via zoom uh, with us uh, here in this meeting thank you so much over to you dr gazala everyone and thank you for your introduction and inviting me for this uh, panel discussion the topic today uh, i think uh, i have been well introduced by the presenters so i'll not be introducing much about myself but i would surely like to talk a little bit about pathfinder international so pathfinder international um, in india we have been working since more than 25 years now and in various parts of the country and almost all states of the country we have worked on and most of uh, important contribution is towards the health of the women and the children and we generally focus on the sexual and reproductive health rights hiv but in india we haven't worked much on hiv but mostly we work on the sexual and reproductive health rights and menstrual hygiene is part of that talking about work in haryana so uh, pathfinder international has helped um, government of haryana and mission director nhm in haryana to uh, we have provided technical support on menstrual hygiene program and provided tot for the entire uh, state Uh, today uh, the topic which i would be talking about it is on wash practices and wash techniques i think most of my colleagues they have spoken about uh, menstrual hygiene but here i will not go deep into that but i'll just have a small presentation to talk about wash technique so we all know that safe water sanitation and hygiene these are basic human rights and it's not only crucial for health but it is also crucial for the overall uh, well being of the individual and communities uh, how big is the problem uh, related to wash so uh, as per who more than 8 million people die each year you know from diarrhea because of uh, poor wash uh, practices and services and um, we also know that globally 2 million people uh, do not have access to safe water and they use water sources which are can contaminated with feces um, a recent study by unicef suggests that 2.2 billion people lack access to safe water and more than half of the global population does not have access to safe sanitation uh, safe toilets and uh, almost 3 billion people do not have access to hand washing practices especially when we talk about hand washing with soap and still almost 12% of the population open uh, defecate openly so all this has lot of consequences but the most important uh, but children are most vulnerable due to poor wash uh, conditions and around 700 children under the age of 5 die every day due to diarrheal diseases and this is all contributed due to poor wash practices uh so as i said that it's a basic human right to have safe drinking water but um the unsafe and contaminated water it not only affect the children health it also leads to poor nutrition leading to malnutrition it also impacts their education and learning ability and a lot of girls uh, drop out because of no sanitation services or facilities available at school so i think most of my colleagues have spoken about that so it's very important to build or to provide safe wash services to the individual and community so that they uh, their health is maintained and it leads to building a, a great nation with 
high productive individuals. So there are basic simple practices which I have tried to uh, sum up. So the first important is, uh, and it is also related to COVID-19, as we have seen that uh, basic uh, practices like hand washing, social distancing. So all those things are the basic wash practices. The first one is improving hand washing behaviors. Hand washing behavior, not only after the toilet, but also during the, uh, to promote food hygiene, as well as to promote safe water practices. So everything is related to hand washing. The second is drinking and storing water safely. So water can be contaminated not only during the, uh, not only the source could be contaminated, but also how we store the water, it also leads to a lot of contamination. And we need to not only provide safe water to the individuals, but also we need to teach or educate the individuals to store the water safely. Using of toilet, which has proper water and drainage facilities will improve the sanitation practices and the hygiene. The hygiene practices, not only we have to have personal hygiene, but also the environmental hygiene need to be taken care of, for which we need to have clean and clear uh, households and environments which are free of trash, pieces, and it helps them more. So uh, I think involving children would be uh, some of the basic steps which we can take to improve the hygiene uh, practices. So children need to be taught about wash during their schools. They need to be motivated that whatever wash activities they learned in the schools, it need to be um, taken down to the communities and to their families so that the community and families also start practicing those wash um, practices and teaching them basic waste management. So uh, right now government is focusing a lot on waste management and it's, um, but this basic skill need to be built during the school curriculum. So good wash and waste management practices, if they are um, adopted consistently by the communities that it will not only um, help us in preventing different illnesses, but will, it will also lead to um, decreasing the transmission of COVID-19. And uh, along with this, I think um, uh, two, three uh, areas are very important where wash need to be practiced. So first, individual level, we need to practice wash. Secondly, we need to practice at the healthcare facilities. So still we see that in a lot of um, health facilities, proper wash services are not available. A lot of health facilities, they do not have uh, toilets or they do not have hand washing facilities or soap availability. So we need to build um, good infrastructure for our healthcare facilities so that they are able to provide um, quality healthcare services to the communities and individuals. Secondly, all the public spaces like schools. Hey, Rakala, I'm sorry. Please, please sum up. We are already short of time. Request you. Um, thank you. So I think uh, this was all I wanted to speak about uh, WASH. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ghazala. And now I would request Ms. Renu Nag, who's the panel moderator, to please take over and start with the Q&A. Ms. Renu Nag heads the learning and development at India Vision Foundation. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sligda. And first of all, let me thank all the esteemed panelists because each one of them highlighted uh, the relevance of menstrual hygiene and the various issues and the challenges that are uh, linked with, with this problem. So thank you very much. All of you, in your own way, you have shed light on each uh, problems also, as well as you have given solution also, um, uh, while uh, Shobika highlighted the issue of uh, female inmates inside prison, how they are tackling the problem of menstrual hygiene and how uh, India Vision Foundation and the Spark Minda Foundation along with Pathfinder is uh, trying to solve this issue in prisons. 
uh, I was happy to uh, uh, learn about uh, period society from Anisha, who uh, highlighted the issue of transgender, this problem of menstrual uh, hygiene and he uh, health management. Uh, in transgenders and uh, various other uh, 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 sections of the society, vulnerable sections, while uh, Nayan's uh, uh, solutions uh, are actually very, uh, he gave very simple solutions which are easily affordable and uh, locally available. So I would request other uh, people who are with us to uh, actually go and read more about uh, the solution that Nayan has given, which, which are actually the nutrition and uh, uh, the uh, lack of uh, accessibility to food uh, during COVID is actually a real problem, especially in this vulnerable uh, communities and section of the society. So your solution then are very, uh, very uh, uh, localized and easily accessible and affordable also. And I would like to thank Dr. Ghazala also who highlighted the various uh, who, uh, the various wash techniques that can be easily adopted uh, uh, to, for us so as to uh, face the, this problem of uh, COVID-19. So by this, I thank once again all the STEAM panelists for their uh, uh, special uh, presentations and their, uh, their uh, way in which they try to highlight the issue and educate, educate all of us. Now for the questions, uh, Sigda, do we have questions or... Uh, should I go ahead? Because I have also had few questions. Ma'am, so what happened is we had to go live on Facebook and I'm really sorry we had a technical okay. glitch and we couldn't. So we were expecting a more participation from the live event from Facebook and we would have definitely put some questions. But uh, because we have mentioned about the session already, we already have some questions that were being shared with you. Uh, can you, can we take? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, I will, I will take. Uh, I think, Sigda, how much time we have? I'll just go with the time. How much time we, have? we can? We can take like a five, ten minutes Q&A, whatever. Okay, okay, yes. okay. So uh, I'll pose this question to the panelists and whosoever uh, think, thinks that they can answer this question, please feel free and answer. The first question uh, that was uh, sent to us is, what are the common myths and taboos during menstruation and how do they affect the status of women? So ma'am, I would request all the panelists if they can just switch on their camera so it will be easy for all of them uh, in terms of visibility. Thank you so much. And then maybe we can unmute and talk. Yes. Uh, so who would like to answer? What are the common myths and taboos during menstruation and how do they affect the status of women? Uh, yeah, that's all other side. Yes ma'am. So there are a lot of myths related to menstruation, but the most common ones are that the um, menstruation blood that is impure and because of it, the menstruator becomes impure and he, she is not able to perform or she should not perform uh, basic daily uh, practices like the religious practices or going into the kitchen, preparing food. So all those things, uh, these are the basic things which we uh, th see is a myth. And it leads to a lot of, uh, what you call the woman, uh, as you said that, oh, how it affects the woman. Um, so it not only affects the woman uh, mentally, but emotionally as well. And the woman, uh, the menstruating woman, she feels uh, inferior because she is not able to perform these basic daily activities, which she is, uh, she is doing every day. And uh, so uh, this is one of the myths, though there are a lot of myths, but I think uh, we, do, we are sort of time. Okay. One question that uh, I would also like to ask is, uh, somebody has asked uh, in, uh, during present time, uh, during the COVID time, there has been a, a really aggravation of mental health issues uh, especially in menstruating women and girls. So uh, can any one of you highlight the reasons for this, for this aggravation? So generally the menstruators, they, uh, there are a lot of hormonal changes happening during the, that phase because of which the woman uh, is in generally stressed out. It might be anxiety. So uh, generally people call it PMS. So uh, it is real. And when she is uh, 
in the covid situation we are uh, uh, we are confined at our homes we are not able to meet to people so that frustration and that anxiety is uh, in, uh, increased many folds and that's why women are facing more problem during this covid 19 situation and also the uh, the accessibility to the menstrual hygiene um, materials or items that is also low so uh, it adds to the frustration and the fear or anxiety thank you thank you so much dr gazala one last question sridha i will i will uh, take this yes. is what are the positive aspects of menstruation let us go on uh, go back end this uh, panel discussion on a positive note so what are the positive aspects of menstruation um, i think a lot of Uh, Anisha, Anisha we, are, we are unable to hear you. Yes. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, the first thing that I would say would be um, everyone tells that menstruation is the reason why life exists. So that's I think one of the biggest positives. But also, um, a lot of people do. Um, you know, if you look at it in a positive note, a lot of women, a lot of menstruation. Consider menstruation something that makes them feel powerful, something that helps them connect with themselves. That, um, and I think it really it, it's really person to person. But I think um the positive note of menstruation is just that over everything, I think a lot of people can connect with themselves in a way that a non-menstruator would be unable to. And I think that's that's something that a lot of menstruators once they once they learn to kind of you know. These all the societal norms that kind of hold them back from just considering periods as something that's okay and normal. Um, I think a lot of people just connect with um their inner self. Some people consider it um a sign of femininity. Some people consider it a sign of life. And and I think again, like I said before, it's important to person as to what we consider it to be. But I think it can make people feel very powerful about themselves and their body. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anisha. Uh, I think. Thirty uh, seconds. Can I just take thirty seconds? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. All please. right. So, uh, somebody, uh, you you place the first question about myths and taboos. Over various platforms, I keep advocating about uh, one of my understanding with working in this subject that this subject is known and is practiced as a subject for mother, daughter, mother-in-law, and sister. Till the time it remains the subject for them. this problem is not going to be sorted out it has to be a subject for father son father in law and brother also the moment the society accept this fact and start practicing we will get better results thank you very much i stop here thank you so much praveen ji i think we all uh, uh, endorse your uh, su your suggestion your thoughts thank you so much thank you very much uh, snigdha over to you please thank you renu ma'am for moderating the panel and keeping a tap on the time of everybody presenting and keeping them you know uh, in the timeline and also these questions are been uh, rephrased uh, by our team in english and they were been asked by the beneficiaries from us and we had collected these questions from them uh, we will try to you know uh, make smaller videos of this session and try to uh, you know help our beneficiaries and the marginalized and the vulnerable communities to understand this uh, session uh, more equally because it is, this session is definitely for them so we will try to do our best to put this in parts and uh, reach the right individuals at the right time and thank you for all your time and now to you know uh, since you've uh, given your time out of your busy schedules i would request uh, mr praveen and miss monica uh, uh, ma'am uh, who is the director of india vision foundation along with renu ma'am who is head of learning and development to felicitate you with a e memento uh, for your esteemed presence in this panel discussion so sumit can we have uh, the e memento please thank you anisha for uh, being a part of this uh, panel discussion thank you hey anisha thank you very much for being a part of it 
possibly this is the that one discussion where i have uh, joined in with one of the youngest panel ever i think i have been part of more than 50 panel discussions also uh, most of the time i am the youngest out of them i got a younger panel than me <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> very sweet very informative thank you thank you uh thank you dr kazala for your uh, information about uh, uh, bosch and i have uh, attended both of your sessions uh, in the prison also which you did and that was very very informative and thank you so much and looking forward to our further associations also thank you very much ma'am very informative we keep learning from you thank you kazala ji thank you shobhika for presenting um, our uh, pilot project uh, project shakti a lot to go on that and um, now praveen has given us another wonderful idea of uh, doing awareness sessions with men so surely we will add this component in our project shakti and see how we can do when the pandemic is little settled down and the prisons are open how we can add awareness sessions for at least the youth in the men which we have inside the prison so thanks praveen for giving this uh, this suggestion thank you monika and uh, congratulations uh, shobhika uh, you are very good and uh, new project for you from uh, monika ji all the best <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you can we have nands um e-memento please i think sunit really liked the slide and he's just not <laughs> presenting it keeping him to himself sunit can we have the slide for mr nayan please so nand the yeah. slide will come but uh, i would like to thank you uh, for your uh, for sharing your insight which was very practical and surely uh, with this project shakti we would be looking forward to more of our interactions and finding so that we can work uh, and innovate accordingly so thank you so much thank you nan sir many of you may not be knowing that nan sir is uh, my alumnus also and people like me learn from him so thank you for being the part of it sir thank you thank you so much praveen monika ji and all of us who had actually come together to make this project a grand success and taking it forward what praveen said so yes uh, i think anisha you are the youngest panel member i have ever shared the panel with and uh, why i'm sharing this because my son who is 15 years old is of your age and i think this is a good beginning when the father and son or father and daughter can come together and talk about issues like menstruation i think that's the beginning and that's the world that you know we all want to see thank you so much thank you nayan thank you I think I'm more than delighted. I'm feeling very, very happy. This was one of my agendas uh, with for the menstruation, uh, menstrual hygiene day, and I was constantly pushing this. And Swara, who is the founder of the Period Society, had to join us from New York, but unfortunately, because of the time zones, uh, she couldn't join. But I'm very, very happy that Anisha had joined us today. And when I read her age, I was uh, very excited to see. how she must be talking because she she has also been a speaker with tedx and it was really nice to have all of you and the panel now i would request ms monica dhawan the director of india vision foundation who has given us all this opportunity to come together and have this wonderful conversation on menstrual hygiene ma'am over to you uh thank you snigda uh, first of all uh, everyone i would like to inform you that uh, we would like to thank you snigdha for initiating this panel discussion because myself and my team was too much engaged in uh, in other pandemic uh, situations but snigdha was very very um, very very sure to have this panel discussion and i think uh, uh, this this has went very well and uh, technical glitches happen so we can't go um, live on facebook but i think snigdha will make a good video out of it and share with us and we might put this on our youtube channel also where we can share this with other uh, and more audience also so thank you snigdha for making this possible and uh, let's have a big round of applause for snigdha snigdha thank you 
So also I would like to thank and give my uh, closing note that as everybody has shared this insight and I believe that uh, uh, collaborating, we can reach out to many more and uh, very quickly. So I'm happy that today we have collaborated with a very young organization and young, young uh, person like Anisha and we are looking forward to be associated with them um, over a period of time also Anisha. So thank you so much for being a part of uh, this, uh, this program and this Zoom session. And we would be keeping me in touch with you also. And also, as you all have shared your insight about uh, the, what, what menstrual hygiene has been done. So as India Vision Foundation, menstrual hygiene has always been one of our major, uh, major intervention when we talk about either inside uh, prison or with our young adolescent girls or, or the children of incarcerated we are working for. And from past this week, I think we have reached out to more than 200 uh, uh, females and young adolescents through our various sessions uh, planned by uh, LND team and communication headed by Renu Nag, Jannat, and Snigtha, and obviously in cooperation with my program team, uh, which is headed by uh, Ravi and Snigtha. So it's all a collaborative work, but I think this is just a beginning. We will surely uh, take these uh, these uh, uh, sessions forward, and I believe uh, pandemic definitely has um, motivated us all to meet more virtually, which is economically and easy also. So we will surely get connected with each other um, very frequently and learn from each other. So we always believe that uh, we might not be expert in everything, but with collaboration, with partnering with like-minded people with the same intention and same uh, same uh, cause that we can reach out to more people. So uh, let's keep uh, our partnership alive and we will keep adding on good resource people, a good resource uh, 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 people with us to, to expand this, uh, this panel discussion and uh, let's let's Praveen we can plan few events more frequently also on a quarterly basis because virtually it is possible uh, to meet each other more frequently we would be definitely be very interested to know more about uh, period society in Asia so uh, convey uh, our message to Swara that we are looking forward to connect with the period society. And as uh, Praveen and Nen said that you are setting an example for, uh, for our youngsters also. I myself have uh, two sons and I would be thinking and talking to them uh, tonight and see how they can they can participate in, in our conversation. And why not our own children, but our beneficiaries, our young boys, are, are, there, are there are a lot of we can connect with. So you have uh, given us all a new hope and uh, energizes us as a, as a parents and as other things also. So thank you so much, Snigdha. So I think uh, we will take this uh, forward. And I, I believe uh, we are also launching a campaign, which is again uh, Snigdha's, um, uh, Snigdha's brainchild. And she wants to promote this and want to launch this, a fundraising campaign, which is named as Samman. And uh, we, we talked about this, about the name, and then we came up with Samman because this is something which we all should be proud of. And uh, so Snigdha, I believe Snigdha has a video to show us. So Snigdha, can we have a video on this campaign, please? Yes, ma'am. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you uh, for introducing the fundraising campaign. And as ma'am said that, you know, we would like to make an attempt to bring in notice of individuals that uh, other than ration or hygiene support needs of the beneficiaries, they also need menstrual hygiene support as well. So the, the, uh, the agenda of the fundraiser is to support them with these menstrual hygiene kits that we'll be helping our beneficiaries with. And this short video will help you to understand more about the fundraiser. Sumit, can we have the video please?
Thank you so much, Sumit, for sharing this lovely video. And uh, we are going live with Mila for our fundraiser. So we would request all of you to kindly help us spread the word. And uh, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and uh, everyone who has joined us for this panel discussion, and especially my volunteer and intern team, and uh, with one of my team members, Saksham and Lata. Both of them have been the rock throughout for this entire event, and we all have been working really hard since a few days for this event. And um, thank you to all the interns who have helped me collate all this together, which includes Hannah, Vandana, and also Justin, who had just quickly done this video for us, uh, and it had just arrived like like ten minutes prior to the event. So thank you, everyone. And now I would request all of you to, uh, you know, I had uh, suggested that we can just take a picture for the theme that is being introduced by the UN, and that was its time for action. And this is our action point from India Vision Foundation that we want to generate funds, and you know, we want to help these vulnerable and marginalized communities, especially individuals who are staying in resettlement colonies. So I would request all of you to please switch on your cameras. And if we can just quickly write on a paper, and we can just put this together for a group picture. Um, it's visible. It's nice. Saksham, can can we have like everybody on the screen, please? Yes, everyone's on the screen. I'm just waiting for Shobhi command. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And like Monica Ma'am said, that this is just the starting of these discussions, and we might just take it in quarterly basis also. And I was personally very excited to do this, and I'm really happy that we've made it today. Thank you so much, each and everyone who had contributed in their own ways to the session. Thank you so much for joining us. Today. Thank you, Sunita. Beautiful moderation. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Stay safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you.